Hi everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at uh, Maya 2013's uh, Split Polygon tool and also the Interactive Split uh, tool. Um, basically, uh, they're both very, very similar. Uh, the Interactive tool, uh, the Interactive Split tool, I should say, uh, was sort of uh, added recently as a replacement for the Split Polygon tool. Uh, the Split Polygon tool had some uh, limitations to it that were quite frustrating uh, to use. And uh, the interactive split that's replaced it, unfortunately, has uh, also uh, uh, a heap of limitations, which makes it just as frustrating to use as the split polygon tool. Um, although those differences, uh, uh, or those issues are different. Um, so basically now what we've got is two, two tools that do a similar function but neither of them does it very well. Um, so hopefully at some point in the future they will get that tool right um, and, and sort it out. But uh, let's uh, take a look at where we can access those tools and let's see what those tools do. So um, the first thing we'll need to do is uh, just make sure we've got an, an object of some kind. Um, I'm just going to use a cube. And we need to set our menu set status to polygons up here in the left hand corner. Uh, then what we'll do is come up to the Edit Mesh menu and down to Interactive Split Tool. Uh, I'm going to open up the tool settings using the little option box button here. And we can see those settings over here on the right hand side. Um, there's only a couple of settings really. Um, we've got Detach Edges and Constraint to Edge. Uh, and we've then got a Snap Magnets function uh, or value and a, uh, a Magnet Tolerance. Now they've added in these color settings down here. Um, which really you don't need to worry about at all. Um, it's kind of a, a bit of overkill really putting those in, but um, you can you can kind of get a bit of an idea of um, sort of the, the colorations um, of the, the interface as we use the tool. Uh, so let's first of all take a look at what the tool does. Basically what this tool does, as the name would suggest, it allows us to split polygons. So with this cube, I've got one polygon per side on this cube which you can see here. Um, what I can do is cut these polygons up using this tool. So basically all we do is click on an edge and then click on another edge like that. Now when you press enter on the keyboard, um, it basically locks that, it turns the tool off and locks that cut in. So now you can see I've got two individual polygons on this top part of the, um, uh, the object. Now one thing to keep in mind is because I've added a cut, basically what that's doing is adding vertices along the middle of these edges here. You can see these two vertices here, one here and one here. And what that's resulting in, um, although this polygon and this polygon both have four sides, this polygon here and the one on this side now have five edges. And that can cause problems when you're trying to use other tools. Um, such as the um, insert edge loop tool uh, and uh, and maybe one or two others. Um, some some of the tools basically rely on um, having four sided polygons in your model. So keep that in mind when you're using this tool. Uh, so uh, basically, yeah, you can see that um, we can pretty much uh, add multiple cuts in as well. Uh, we can go around the model like this and add in a whole bunch of cuts. Now we can also, uh, if I kind of click there, when I press enter, okay, you can see that I've got two ends of this cut, both uh, basically on the same edge, but they're not joined together. But you can see how I can cut very quickly all the way around an object like that. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the settings for the tool and see what they do. Uh, the first setting that I want to have a look at is um, the Snap Magnets tool. I'm going to kind of skip these for a second. The Snap Magnets tool, basically um, what snapping is, is uh, as you move your cursor along an edge, you can see when you get close to a vertex, which is this corner uh, piece just here, you can see that the little orange dot jumps. Um, that orange dot's called a highlight point. Um, so you can see it jumps. So what that's doing, it's snapping to that vertex. Now, the snap magnet's currently set to 1. Now, what this 
really means. It's a bit of a weird terminology that they've used. What this term is sort of referring to is the number of positions along the length of an edge that your cursor can snap to. So at the moment it's set to one. So what that's going to do is create a position in the middle just here that the cursor will snap to like that. And this is really handy because it means basically you can very accurately and quickly find the middle of an edge if you wanted to split a polygon directly down the middle. So in this case, if I want to split this side in half, I can just move my cursor till it jumps to the middle, just left click and then do the same thing at the bottom. And what that does is gives me two completely evenly split polygons. I've split it right down the middle there like that. Um, Oops, let's just turn that split polygon tool on again. So basically, um, that's what the snap magnets does. Now, I can increase this number. Let's say I increase this to four. Um, actually, what I'll do is increase it to three. What this is going to do is give me uh, basically three positions along this edge that the object will snap to. So what that's going to do is give me um, uh, an edge that I can divide into quarters. So uh, that's what the split polygon tool, tool does. Basically, it just allows you to um, to divide things up like this. Now, um, the constraint to edges function uh, was sort of new to this version of the tool. Uh, and what this allows you to do, uh, for example, if I come down here and let's say I, I start here and I click, technically I should be able to un uh, untick this, turn this off, and then click in the middle of the polygon like that. And you can see that it's colouring this blue and that's referring to a face point. So I can click in the middle like this and then if I come back up to constrain edges again I can then terminate this on an edge like that. Oops. And then press enter and it will actually cut uh, that polygon up into um, a, a sort of much more random shape. Now that's really handy and the older tool couldn't really do that. Um, the older tool is really just um, able to just go from one edge to another edge. Um, so that tool is really nice for getting these kind of more randomized shapes. Um, let's have a look uh, at uh, what the split polygon tool does, like the original tool. Uh, to access that, um, what, uh, what I need to do is uh, right click and select object mode like this and just click on the object and I hold down shift and then hold down the right mouse button and what this will do is give me this little split menu here on the left now when you highlight it it'll jump into this little double menu like this so you can see there as I move my cursor across to split it changes straight away and you can see these two little uh, dots in the middle of, uh, of this menu. If I move my cursor back over to this dot, it'll jump back to the previous menu. That's how these little, um, little marking menus work. Okay, so I can move that across. So I've got the interactive split tool, which is what we've just been using. And I've got the original split polygon tool. So I'll open the options for that. And you can see it's completely different. Um, it's completely different. So uh, let's have a look at um, sort of what these settings do. So we've got divisions, and these are vertices added per edge. What this does, um, basically, if uh, I click, let's say I click here and then here, I get a single edge. If I press enter, you can see it locks in. And that's pretty much the same as interactive split. Okay, um, I'll just press G to access that tool again. Um, it drops the tool when you press enter to lock the cut in. So you can just press G um, and it, it turns the, the previous tool back on. Um, we've got split only from edges just here, which is a little tick box. And then we've got use snapping points. Um, so those snapping points are the same as the snap, snap magnets from the, the interactive version and the number of points is the same as the um, uh, the, the snapping uh, uh, the the number of snapping points along the edges in the other tool. Okay, so th those settings are the same. 
okay? Um, this divisions though is different, okay? Um, if I set this divisions to five, just uh, press enter and I do another cut from here to here. So this is the first one that I did. And this is the obviously the one that I've just done. If I press enter, you can see they both look pretty much the same. But if I right click and select vertex mode, you can see that this edge has um, four vertices along it. So it's been split into five individual edges, one, two, three, four, five. Whereas this one only has one edge. Um, we can kind of see that here. I can highlight these red. So I've actually got a whole bunch of smaller edges making up this single line. Um, and that's one of the bigger differences with um, with this tool. So what that means is um, basically if I wanted to um, create divisions along this edge that I could then snap more cuts to, um, I can use this tool to do that. So basically that would allow me to, um, uh, for example, click and drag here. Now this will snap to the middle just there. So basically I can click and drag the starting point of my cut like this. And then if I click and drag over here, I can then get it to locate on that first little vertex that was created. Now the biggest difference with those two, these two tools is that when I click and drag along here, once it hits a vertex on an edge or a corner, it won't go any further. Okay, with the interactive split tool, because you don't necessarily click and drag on the edge, you just move the cursor until the orange dot is where you want it to be, and then you just click once to lock that position in. They work slightly differently. So um, with this one, it's actually a lot um, more accurate uh, for getting an edge uh, cut directly into a corner or a vertex. Um, and that's purely because you can uh, click and drag across until you hit the vertex. If you continue dragging a little bit past the vertex, it ensures that the cut starts right on that vertex. Um, you can then click and drag again on your other object. Um, keep in mind, you can also continue cutting around the object like this. And then you just press enter to lock it in. Um, the problem with interactive split is that sometimes when you click, when you think you're on a vertex like this, and you click, sometimes it's just slightly off, and you may not notice, and uh, that can cause issues like having um, polygons with more than four sides, um, and it also stops. Uh, that would then stop some tools working on that uh, polygon. So um, both tools are similar, but they also have some significant differences. Um, you'll also find sometimes with the interactive split tool that um, the, the, there'll be instances along a single cut that you're doing that you want the magnets to be on and other times when you want the magnets to be off. And it's sort of, uh, it means you've got to keep this panel open. You have to keep coming back across here and changing this number. And uh, there's been instances where, um, you know, I've had to change this number two, three, four times during a single cut um, or a single series of cuts to get the result that I want. Uh, whereas the interactive, or sorry, the split polygon tool, the other version of this tool, actually works perfectly for that. Um, you don't have to change the number. So... Uh, just keep that in mind, um, but have a have a play around with both of those tools to um, uh, to kind of work out what the differences are. Uh, so with that said, uh, I'll leave this video here, and I'll see you next time.